Good morning, folks. We'll start with some links and things to check out. First, if you're not watching Mr. Too Tough 2, that's Billy Yelverton of The Observers in our lab with our 70,000 volt transformer. Major upgrade to the landform experiments. Definitely check it out if you get the chance. Then, many remember the terrific discussion with Dr. Kong Pop Uyen describing the patterns and possible mechanisms of space weather induced natural disasters. Our Skype connection wasn't the best. But David Hyde of the Suspicious Observers Collective transcribed the entire thing on our blog page. That's linked for you below. He included the audio so you can read along and listen, and he always adds visual aids to help in the comprehension as well. Remember when I got lambasted for simply sharing the now popular critique that zero climate models factored in geothermal venting in submarine volcanoes? I remember, and here is the third such resource explaining the genesis of Antarctica's melting, and it's not us. Furthermore, the evidence given at this channel for a coming mini ice age is wholly independent of the mechanisms described in this paper, which puts us about 10 to 20 years from the start of the next one. Where have we heard this before? Quake uptick is in swing. Apart from the 6.4 in the Indian Ocean, this is the fourth multi-6 mag reading downgraded in the last three days. Staying underground, we have two more American volcanoes on alert in Alaska and in Hawaii. We also have a severe surge warning in the Caspian Sea, which should be cresting right about now. Yesterday, we noted the low between Australia and New Zealand, and today we're watching its convergence curve directly across the land. In Europe, the same line of note in the Mediterranean is a concern, but also the building clouds and precipitation due north of that got the Atlantic low out there to the west as well. The convergence in the US was rough last night, causing some damage, and will do so again tonight. Interesting that the actual cell driving this convergence is hundreds of miles north into Canada, but the bad weather only seeks the greatest convergence of differing air masses, colliding tonight in that same Midwest area. Solar wind? Very calm, but we do expect a coronal hole stream at some point soon. Magnetosphere? Just fine. Solar flaring continues to fail to live up to last week's show. The decline is undeniable, we're barely taking M1s, but one of the larger events we did take this morning was nearly center disk. Luckily the ejecta looks sparse. The sunspots have been more interesting than the flaring itself for a while. The group departing up north is well divided left and right, while the southern former X maker appears mostly monopolar but for some tiny spots surrounding it. We'll get a better look at the incomers tomorrow and begin magnetic classification. Right now, Mars and Mercury share a connection on the Earth-facing disk while Earth and Venus connect to the departing limb. The coronal fields can't decide if they want the negative or the positive coronal holes to be more geo-effective, but the high variability is something we'll watch with strong force to the southern regions and at least moderate to above average power up north. The dark coronal holes are very easy to spot in 211 angstroms. Current conditions and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.